Well, hey there, welcome back Quilty Peeps. And today is a number 34 episode in my Sew Your Stash series. And we are going to be doing the in-flight block, which is a butterfly block. Okay, so this is a five inch block. I've got four of them done to show you here. I thought they would look cute on my little bitty boards here. So I used my calico collection to make these four small ones and I have some more cut here. We'll talk about that in a minute. I also am going to give you measurements for a 10 inch block because I thought, you know, why not? So I will give you the measurements for that in um, the video description here. So all you have to do is read the words under my video description and where it says show more, click on to that and it will show you all kinds of links, measurements, things you need to know about this video. So, not only is it episode number 34 in my Sew Your Stash series, but we are in the middle of the Scrapping This Is Happiness Quilt Along, and that's where this five inch block is in, my in-flight block, and we are in week 21. And so I just thought I'd do a quick little video and show you how to make these blocks. I mean, these blocks are super easy and fast. I just wanna show you where this is in the book. Let's see, in-flight. The block is on page 148. The quilt is on page 150. So, wow. So here's the block instructions. And here is the quilt instructions. Okay, the quilt is 79 and a half by 67 and a half. And it's just a really fun, fun, fun quilt to use up your scraps because I, I really wanted to do a smaller block for this in the book. Um, you know, I could have done a 10 inch block or any size block, but it's really fun to do these small blocks because we all have scraps that are smaller. Now you can use your one and a half inch and two and a half inch strip baskets to cut these, but here I've got some cut here, but um, you can also use your five inch strips. So I just pulled these five inch strips to show you so for instance, here's, here's one that I cut. Here's two wings, okay, and here's two bottom wings. Like, well, I shouldn't show you the big one. Let me throw that there. Roll my truck, okay. So these are top wings and these are bottom wings. And it's super easy to cut them out of your five and a half because what I would do is, you know, I didn't bring my rotary in, but I would cut them like this. I would use that straight edge, cut off this zigzag, and I would just cut them like this. And that can be discarded, or you can use, save that for if you're doing a tiny strings block, that's cute to keep. And then the rest, I would just fold up and put back into my five inch strip baskets. And I think that would be really cute for top wings. If you wanted to do bottom wings, I would just do the same thing. But these, you can get side by side like this and hardly have any waste at all. Just And so it's super easy when you're cutting from your scrap baskets because you just have small pieces to choose from. And I just went into my aquas and picked two that I thought would be cute together. This is from my flea market and this is from my bee plaids. And you know, as you know, I make all my collections go together and so I just wanted to show you how easy it is when you're working with smaller pieces of fabric instead of going through like big cuts of fabric and baskets and stuff like that. That's why I love having my strips to just grab from and cut really quick. And you know, I cut these four and then all of these right here at the same time. It was super easy, super fast because they were just from my strips basket, okay? I used the same background, so here's the squares that go around, you need eight of those, and of course the cutting is in the book for this size. But I wanted to show you something different that is not in the book that I have showed you, shown you before, I showed you in my checkerboard star. But because um, all of these butterfly bodies are the same fabric, I decided why not strip piece them instead of just cut them separately and sew that on that and that on that you could easily but it's just as easy to cut a strip set so all you do is cut at the height 
of the, instead of just cutting one piece, you just cut a strip. And then you would cut these one inches because this calls for a one inch square. And then you're simply, what I did with these is I just simply laid my ruler on here and cut into it by one inch like that. Let me see if I've got a, let's see, where's my one and a half? Yeah, that's tall enough. So all I do is I just lay that on there and just simply cut it. And then I've got a bunch of bodies and that was fast to piece. So, just kind of wanted to show you that. Let me put that aside, bring this cutting back. Now, sewing this butterfly is really super duper easy. Um, I'm just gonna set those there. And you can see the butterfly is on the quilt, plus there. And again, the five inch block is in my book. And all this consists of is easy corner triangles. So I th let me see, I think I'm gonna sew this aqua one. So I'm just gonna grab a stack of these. And these are the wings. And so what you want to make sure of are the wings go up like this. Okay, the rectangle is tall and narrow and then these rectangles go sideways. And you can tell the measurements you know, should fit this way. If you're going like this, you know that's not gonna work. Okay, so that's a good way to remember. Another thing that you want to remember is these are opposites, meaning, see the easy corner triangles are on this, these two corners. If you turn it and put it like this, it's, you know, I don't think it works. So you see what I'm trying to say, that, that the easy corner triangles would end up here. So you have to remember that both are opposite corners. So how I remember that is I lay them first, whoops, see I already did that wrong. This top one, face down, goes on these corners. This top one goes on this corner. And then I might just kind of set them like this. But really, honestly, and the easiest way to remember is if you just put the top two corners because I know these are opposite, so I don't have to worry about that. Now, and you're gonna do the same thing for this. You're gonna, you're gonna lay one there, and then one on the outside there. And then I know that once those are sewn, then it's going to be opposite for these. But you can see they're completely opposite. You don't wanna do these two pieces the same. Now, I'm gonna talk about something that I haven't talked about before, but this is certainly an option. And that is, if you are worried about your squares shifting like this, you can use a little bit of glue. And I just use Sue glue if I'm going to do this. And I just put a little bit on the very corners. Let's see, I just grabbed this bottle. I'm gonna grab a pen and make sure this. This may be a bottle I haven't used for a while. I wanna make sure this glue comes out. So I would just put a couple of daubs on the corner. You're gonna trim this off anyway, but I'm going to press these open because it's such a small block, so I don't wanna go too far in, but it really is easy enough to just put a few, and then this way, if you're going to use glue, you can go ahead and do the opposite corners if you want. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this one off. And I just wanna show you what that looks like after you've glued it. Now this glue I use all the time. If you follow my applique stuff, you know that I use this in my applique, but I've never shown you that you can use it for piecing. It's very inexpensive, it's a temporary glue, and it goes a long way, and I really like it. So all you have to do with that is go ahead and of course I'm not gonna be sewing through the glue or anything like that, I don't have to worry about it. And yes, I'm gonna answer a question. See, my machine light does work, <laughs> but I turn it off um, just for filming so there's not a strange glare. And this is Miss Patsy, named after Patsy Klein. And so what I'm gonna do is start sewing right in this corner right here, and I'm gonna follow this line right here on this corner. And because it's lined up with my needle, I know it's gonna work. Oh, gotta put it on my stitch. I know it's gonna work really well. Okay, and I just follow that along. 
pull in the other one. And normally I'm chain piecing several of these blocks, but because this is just one butterfly block, I'm just gonna use scraps of fabric in between. Now I can just turn that around. Now, another question you might have is, why don't you just pin instead of glue? Sometimes you could, and I usually do when I have very large easy corner triangles, but these are so small that I just feel like that if you pin it, see what I mean when I go like that? It just kind of distorts it a little bit, no matter how flat that pin lands. And I don't want these little tiny pieces distorted at all. Okay, and so I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm not gonna glue these. I'm just gonna lay them on there and just keep them where I laid, you know, lay them and start. And I think I'll be fine. But you know, gluing is always an option. I've had people ask me, you know, what kind of glue I use if I ever, you know, use glue. And so I just wanted to show you. So now I know that on these right here, these, um, the, lar the top wings, the larger wings, just gonna run a scrap through there, that I just do the opposite corners. And I know I'm not gonna make a mistake that way. So I'm just gonna lay that down opposite. And I always just make sure I slide these into place right before sewing. Okay, let me grab another scrap. And then all I do at this point is just trim these off. I'm gonna grab my larger scissors and I just trim those off. I don't want to leave too small of a seam allowance and not too large, just, you know, about a quarter of an inch. It can go a little bit smaller, a little bit larger. They're already sewn, so it doesn't matter. And so I can hear, I don't know if you can hear Reed crying a little bit, but Grandpa's down there with him. He'll get him calmed down in a minute. <laughs> if not, we'll take a little break. And then I've just got these little tiny remnants here. And then I just put them in the garbage. And then what I do with this is I come over here and I just set the seams real quick, okay? Now I wanna press these open just because I want these seams nice and flat. This is, let me pull this one in here. See, that's what that looks like open. And it's really nice and flat, there's not you can see on the front how flat that is. And it just really helps. So what I do with that is I just open them up and I just kind of roll it to make sure that it's open like this before I put the iron on. I know now that it's totally open, meaning totally open all the way to the threads where I had sewn, and there's not a little pleat in there. So I can just go ahead and put the iron on top. I can press and not iron. I really don't want to iron back and forth too much because, yes, we've already sewn them, but they're still on the bias, and I don't want to stretch them out. And so I'm just going to go ahead and do the same with all four of these. Just kind of make sure they're open all the way. And I just turn them whenever I need to. Okay. And then I throw that clapper on there to make sure I get them flat. All right. What do you think, sis? Do you think we're okay to keep filming or should we take a break and mm, we're close we're good okay good he's tired he needs he fights his naps yeah <laughs> he does let me tell you guys it's so fun to have a baby in the house even when he does get fussy grandpa he's a little possessive over him he doesn't he fights he fights to get to take reed all the time and play with him and hold him okay so I'm just going to let those cool down for a minute. And then I'm going to come back over here. 
And let me put this back up here. Let's slide this out of the way a little bit. We've got this body. Here, let me grab another design board. I really like to lay these out. In fact, I should just move that out of the way. Okay, so I've got this body here. It's already sewn. And I pressed the seams open too on that strip. I don't know if I showed you that. Okay, let's come over here, see what these look like. Now, this you're gonna lay here, and this you're gonna lay here. But before we do that, I wanna make sure, and I wanna show you how to make sure, is I just grab a ruler, and I know that these were cut two and three quarters inch wide, and so I lay this on the two th and three quarters, and if there's just even a little teeny bit of that hanging over the side, I'll trim that off. And that's just a way to keep things nice, nice and trim. Sometimes it has a tendency to do that, and you can even do it from top to bottom. So I know, see, this is three and three quarters, and see, there's just a little teeny, teeny bit of that at the top and so I wanted to not glue these to kind of see what that does littler is always fussier you know it's hard to get everything squared up perfectly when they're smaller I guess just because it makes so much of a difference when they're smaller you just don't have a lot of give or a lot of leeway and so then we're going to look at the other ones that I glued and see what that looks like. And you saw that I was holding this as, you know, as much as I could, and which I thought looked great, which I think, honestly, these would, would have worked, but I'm just showing you that you can trim them off. Then we're going to bring these over and see if it's the same. The same, you know, you end up having to kind of trim. This one's two and a quarter this way and there's still just just a little hair right there doesn't look like this on that on this one a little touch again and let's look at that way and this is where I'm just being really really picky and persnickety I normally Unless I think it looks like it's way off, I don't even worry about it at this, you know, at this stage. I know they're going to work. But because this is such a simple, super simple, fast, easy block to make, and you can just make a ton of butterflies because they're so easy. And that's why I love this quilt. There's just so many butterflies along this quilt. I just thought it was a good opportunity to show you some of these techniques. And just do this quick video okay and okay so you can see now that all of my easy corner triangles are going the correct way and then the next step is just to sew the bottom wings to the top like this and you're just going to use an accurate quarter inch seam which is right here on my seams so easy guide I'm just going to line them up oh and when I'm doing this I don't like to start with easy corner triangles I like to start with this so I'm going to flip this over, and then they just seem to ease in better for me going that way. That way I can line these up, make sure these are going where they need to go to line up. Flip that there. Start with these corners, not the easy corner triangles, if I have a choice. Sometimes you don't have a choice, and you have to start with the easy corner triangles, and that's fine. You know, we just want to relax and have fun and not worry about too much stuff and just enjoy yourself while you're sewing and try to get your blocks as accurate as you can. You can always trim up after. You can always, you know, it's just not, not really anything that we should just stress about. We should just try and do our best. See, that looks great. And that's all we can do, right? 
And then again, I open these up and I'm really going to make sure that I use that across the seams because I want those completely open because if they're not, that's where you lose a lot in your block, meaning that'll be pleated up or whatever you want to say, and you're going to lose a lot of space in your block and it's not going to be accurate. So I'm just going to press that, get it nice and hot with this vintage iron. See what that looks like under there? I don't have to worry about it not being open. And then let those cool down. And then the next step, this is this is the same size on the top as on the bottom. I did that on purpose so there's not any confusion that way. And then I'm just going to simply sew this. You know what, I might as well use the clamp, keep the clamper over that half. I'm just going to lay it here. You can pin if you'd like, but notice that these do not, you don't have to meet any seams here. I just kind of want this to line up and I'll show you that when I'm doing the other half. But this looks just fine. If you want, you can put the straight body underneath so that you can look at these seams here to make sure they don't get folded under as you are sewing. Sometimes these ones on a slant tend to want to do that. You can pin, like I say, if you like. I don't. I just make sure they meet at the end right here. And then I just kind of adjust in the middle. I use my fingers as my pins most of the time. Okay, I'm going to run that through. Scrap the fabric through. I'm going to go ahead and set this seam, open it up, and again, I really don't know what I would do without my roller. And it's, it's flat, it's not curved. I really like the flat to keep things all nice and not distorted. Okay, just gonna leave that. Let that cool for just a minute. And while that's cooling, I'm just gonna show you the 10 inch block a little bit. It's just twice the measurements, but you know, quilty math sometimes is a little bit more tricky than just twice the measurements because of seam allowances. So I went ahead and gave you those measurements here in this video. So don't forget to click on the video description. Now on this larger one, I did not press my seams open except for when I did the top and the bottom wings together. Just because it's a larger block, you just don't really need to. I also wanted to tell you about this fabric that's in here. This background that I'm using for all of these is in the Hush Hush 2 collection. And that is when um, a bunch of us Riley Blake designers um, get together and do a low volume. And so this is my print, these baby chicks in the Hush Hush 2. And then this is from Stitch. And this is from Farm Girl Vintage, and this is from Calico. I used the same body as I did. All of these small ones are in Calico, as I've said. Okay, let's take these back over and add the other half. Now, when I'm adding this other half, I kind of start here instead of on the ends. See, I, because I want this to line up, and so I will maybe... Put that right there so I know that's going to line up. I'm going to take my double pins. Now my double pin looks like this. I call it double pins because it is a double pin. One pin on each side of the seam allowance. I do not go like this and pin in. It distorts and I just don't need to do that. I just barely pin like that on two sides. I just want to poke it in. That's what it's for. Now I know that's set and where that needs to go to line up. And so now I start here at the top and just make sure those are lined up and go ahead and sew. I'm using my seam allowance. Now, I have, uh, when I developed these pins, I wanted to make sure they were thin enough that you could sew over them. You can, or you can remove them, whichever you would like. And then before I get to that end, I make sure that lines up. So that it ends up nice and even. Stick that back in my pickup truck, and let's see how we did. 
Look at that. See, I, I just didn't want this shifting down there. I wanted it to look like a symmetrical butterfly across. And so now all we've got to do is come over here, set this seam, press it open by rolling it. Okay, I want to make sure I get everything there. So I'm going to end up using probably three clappers on this just because I want to get all of those edges good and let that dry super duper good. All right, so I'm going to slide this over and stack these up right here. I'm going to slide this over even more because I thought I would pull this in and show it to you a little bit. Move these scraps. I took it off the design wall. But aren't these fun? These are just like all scraps of fabric, but I have used my raisin fabric in B cross stitch for the background. And look at these butterflies just jumping out on that dark background. And so I just made sure that I picked a body color. This is from my Prim. Um, this is the little gingham in Pebble in my Prim collection to use for all of the bodies. And I love how that goes with the raisin. I often use pebble and raisin together and they look great. But I just love all the different butterflies just from all different collections from my scrap bins. And then I went ahead and found any color would have worked for the inner border, just anything. But I decided to use this one from Flea Market. I used the same for the binding for this. And then my backing, I used a very colorful backing. This is from my stitch collection. And I thought, I'm finding threads everywhere. And I just think that looks so fun on the back of these. So um, you could do two-tone butterflies, meaning, you know, I pretty much stuck, yeah, this is orange and yellow, but those match. But, you know, you could do a yellow bottom with a blue top if you wanted. You don't have to stick with just the same color. But I just thought it was kind of fun to do that with my scraps. And it's just kind of fun to use all different kinds of prints. Um, you can use a larger scale print even for the small wings here. But look how fun it is to use a larger scale print with this larger 10 inch block and that shows up more. That happens to be the same print that's in the stitch collection um, in yardage and then I love that print so much that I enlarged it and put it in three colors on my wide bag. So these is, this is 108 inches wide, so you don't have to piece your bag. And you know, you could still use that as fabric too. It's very, very good quality. So I just kind of wanted to show you that up close and personal. And so you could see, you know, what it looks like to use a darker background and to have a lighter background. It's just as pretty. You could do any color of background I would just suggest, like for instance, if you were doing, say, a red background, I just wouldn't do any red butterflies because you want those to stand out and jump out at you. This makes a perfect um, quilt for spring, and I'm so excited for spring. I'm ever hopeful. It's still cold here in Utah, but I'm ever hopeful. Spring always comes. But I also think this would make a great quilt for uh little girl's bed, a granddaughter's bed, and a daughter's bed. That would be so fun. Okay, I think I've let this cool long enough. See, that's nice and flat. This should measure five and a half inches at this point. And, you know, we can always use the five and a half trim it ruler to trim it up if you'd like. But I love how all these small butterflies are looking together. So fun. Okay, so we've talked about the quilt, the 10 inch block, and let's talk about what's next. Um, we've got, let's see, in flight. So next week is the neighborhood block, so I'll be doing a tutorial for that because I did not do that yet in my Sew Your Stash series. Then we'll be doing the patchwork flag and we'll be doing, a, I'll be showing you the scrappy block and talking about that. I'll do a tutorial for that the next week. And then we have the patchwork tulip the next week, which I will be doing a tutorial on. That's one of my favorite, favorite scrap buster blocks. Quick Broken Dishes, I've already done tutorial. Quick Dash, I've already done a tutorial. 
and 64 I already talked about last time and won't be doing a tutorial on that and then we have the spring baskets that I'll be doing a tutorial on I've already done the tall pines I've already done the toy sewing machine and so that will end all the tutorials so if I'm right that is one two three and four more tutorials in this sew along and in the sew your stash series but I'm sure I'll continue on with the sew your stash series showing even more scrappy blocks that I did not put into this book so thanks for joining me today in my sewing room I hope that you will have fun sewing your butterflies they're so fun they're so fast great for your stash and I will chat with you later